Okay. So I've been practicing Vipassana for more than uh, five years now, and I find it very useful. Uh, so I just want to create a video like what it is, how it works, why you should consider it, what benefit you can expect, and uh, what is the process, how does it work actually. So the Vipassana has three aspects. Uh, it's built on three different aspects and uh, each aspect kind of uh, build upon each other, right? So the first one is uh, Sila, some precepts, some basic code of conduct. And the second is uh, Samadhi, your practice of single point is called concentration. And the third is Pragya, which is cultivating your own wisdom, right? So let's take them one by one. So the first one is uh, Samadhi, uh, first one is uh, Shila, your precepts, right? So in the Vipassana, you have like five silas, five precepts that uh, is expected from you to follow while you are practicing all these uh, other parts of um, meditation. And why is that? Why do we need some moral code of conduct before we follow some meditation and all that? So if you notice, your mind is actually, if you have ever done any meditation, if you sit for 20 minutes and it's <laughs> if it is first few times, you will notice you, you we cannot sit for even like, we cannot concentrate for even one minute in that 20 minutes, right? Our minds are really restless. Our minds are in a really bad situation, if you notice that. And how does it get into that situation, right? When we have started, when we are a child, I don't think our mind was so restless, right? Somehow along the way, we built our mind is very restless. And so there are certain actions which uh, makes mind even more agitated. There are some actions which is kind of, you know, harmonious and then there are certain actions which are even more uh, agitating for the mind, right? And uh, so, so, the, so in terms of precepts, your first precepts is, for example, uh, do not kill somebody, right? Why do not kill somebody? Um, why do not harm someone? is uh, like when you are harming somebody or when you are killing somebody, right? Uh, to do that, you have to have a very strong uh, affliction inside yourself, right? There has to be some strong anger or hatred or some strong affliction um, in order for you to uh, perform such kind of action, right? And if you have these kind of afflictions and if you, are, and if you perform the action, you kind of cultivated that affliction, right? So if you are have these kind of afflictions inside yourself and if you are cultivating these afflictions, uh, they, are very, they are going to create your mind very restless, right? They are going to make your mind very agitated, very restless. And with, and the next step of Vipassana after Sila is like creating a single point is concentration so that you can go further and, you know, uh, inquire into the nature of reality. So in order for you to do it, it's, you cannot keep adding more and more agitation uh, um, to the to your mind on the other hand you're trying to you know uh, learn to concentrate your mind in one point so these uh, precepts are especially designed so that you you don't end up adding more um, um, more restlessness into your mind right so the first one is do not kill somebody uh, the basic the the reasoning behind it to in order for you to kill somebody you have to cultivate this kind of affliction like anger and hatred and it's just going to make your mind more agitated the second is do not steal. Again, in order for you to steal, uh, there has to be strong greed, right? And again, if you have a strong greed, uh, the mind is going to be more restless. The third is uh, do not lie, or it's more like a skillful speech, right? Do not deceive somebody, or don't do idle talking, and don't backbite, and you know, say harsh words, and all these kind of stuff. Because in order to do that, again, you need some kind of afflictions, right? some kind of uh, maybe some fear maybe some that some kind of affliction that you are cultivating and more you cultivate this affliction the harder the mind is going to be uh, to you know practice single pointed focus man single pointed focus the fourth is uh, celibacy and the reason behind it in order for you to engage um, in order uh, it is basically to avoid building too much lust inside yourself right in order for you to do a so, so much sexual misconduct you need to cultivate a lot of lust inside yourself, right? Again, if you have a lot of lust, your mind is going to be very agitated, right? Then the final one is do not take any intoxicants. And uh, this one is like, uh, we are trying to gain control over our mind. And when we take intoxicant, it has like a positive effect. 
we lose control over our mind, right? So if we take intoxicants, then uh, breaking other precepts are going to be very, very easy, right? So in that sense, um, the fifth precept is basically do not uh, take any intoxicants, right? So that is a basic moral code of conduct and basically it is designed, it's not, uh, you know, it's not uh, like you're going to go in a hell or heaven or that kind of stuff. It's basically designed for you to have more calm and harmonious mind. But otherwise, if you keep, uh, you know, breaking the precepts, uh, is your mind is keep going to be more agitated and the agitated mind is just like more harder to, you know, practice concentration. The second step of the practice is uh, concentration samadhi right and uh, in vipassana uh, even in other practice to practice a single pointed concentration you need to have an object where you uh, focus your concentration right it could be a mantra in some other practices or some other stuff but in vipassana the the object is your breath right and it's very specific you have to focus on uh, below your nostril above the upper lips so in this area you need to keep focus and you need to keep observing the breath coming in coming out right and what and why why we choose breath and what how does it going to build a single pointed focus uh, in the mind right so the one the reason let's say the first let's take the reason why breath right so breath is an incredible object you can choose and some other object i think uh, to build a single pointed focus you could have chosen some other object also but the breath has some special qualities which makes it even better object right the for example the first one is the breath is always in the present moment right so when you are learning to focus single pointedly you are also learning to focus in the present moment the second reason could be the breath uh, you don't have so much attachment or craving for the breath right breath just comes and goes it naturally comes naturally goes you don't have so much craving or aversion with the breath right so you are learning to focus in the present moment without so much attachment or craving for them, something then breath is also connected to your mind right so when the mind is so agitated breath is also very erratic and very you know gross at the same time when the mind is uh, settled down the breath becomes the uh, very subtle right so it's a very nice dynamic object so when you are starting and when you are like a very your breath is very erratic and your mind is so restless you have an object which is more gross which is easy to focus on at the same time when your breath is uh, your mind is settling down now you have an object which is even more you know subtle and it's more it takes more effort it requires more effort and sharpness for you to focus on it so it changes with the uh, the condition of the mind so it becomes even um, you know it it adapt it adapt based on your state of mind and so it's like uh, it gives you a very nice uh, object to practice a meditation with then breath is always with you you can always practice whenever wherever you are so there's many other reasons there's many many reasons and the basic uh, practice here is you just observe your breath coming in coming out right and uh, the more you practice this the more single pointed your mind will become right so you can notice in the beginning if your mind is uh, um, you could have stayed for for like 20 seconds in 24 minutes 20 minutes you will notice that this time will start to increase you will start to increase your time like how long you can stay on an object and um, stay focused on it right that alone itself is a big uh, you know relief or big uh, it gives you a lot of strength in your everyday work or whatever you are doing right if you're studying working whatever it is because if you can stay longer on one point or if you stay longer on whatever you're focused on um, the results are going to be much better right the quality of life will start to improve here itself even if you just practice you know um, breath awareness meditation that's what generally prescribed in the meditations if you uh, are learning meditation from some app or anything else and it's a fantastic uh, practice to start with amazing so the second so first step is precept second step based on the precepts you're building your concentration if you keep if your precepts are not strong then your mind is going to be more restless and it's going to be harder for you to work on the second step but if precepts are good solid then you it is going to be relatively easy to work on this uh, concentration of the mind 
and the third step is cultivating your own wisdom uh, pragya this is what is called vipassana right and in the vipassana it is very specific right actually the whole technique of vipassana is built upon uh, a very clear realization so the the fundamental um, idea here is that uh, so even in the buddhism the most uh, you know the first noble truth is uh, life is uh, dukha and the cause of dukha is craving basically right this uh, craving itself is what we call you know uh, suffering in buddhism and this is the reason why your mind is so restless this is the reason why we cannot focus this is the reason like uh, you know it feels so hard you know our mind is planning and plotting all the time and is feeling depressed all kind of stuff all these are like branches where the root itself is uh, this craving right for example for me let's say i'm creating this video to you know i am i crave for praise <laughs> i crave for praise so i'm creating this video uh, behind my motive is uh, my motive could be like to, so that people will uh, you know appreciate me you know so this there is something my mind is craving there's a motive behind doing something that my mind is craving for a praise right it could be something else like i'm i like burger for example and i'm craving for eating the burger so there's countless external object my mind is craving for and trying and reposting to you know there's some people i would not like to be around and there's some sound i don't like and all these kind of things and the vipassana is built on this understanding is uh, built on this knowledge in this realization that you are not really craving for external things or external or aversion to the external objects basically what you are craving and aversion to is uh, uh, basically what you are craving and aversion building craving and aversion towards is your sensations right so it's very interesting to see a craving for praise as well as a craving for burger on the level of sensation are exactly same right it's this exact same sensation that arises when i see any of these two things and then automatically right my mind start to become restless and all these kind of stuff happens right and uh, the whole cycle starts and then it goes in its own way so so the vipassana practice is basically is once you build enough you know concentration you observe your sensation right you observe your sense you first you cultivate the faculty to be able to observe your sensation right when the mind is so dull it won't be able to do it but once you settle down and you start to practice it first you cultivate your uh, uh, you know faculty to be able to observe these sensation and then you start to see um, naturally you start to see the nature of these sensations right nature of what i'm craving for i'm really clinging and craving to these sensation and what is exactly is the nature of these sensations right and what you will find it's uh, impermanent it's very impermanent and this is what the understanding we are trying to cultivate with the practice of vipassana that i am in, inside myself i am actually craving for this and aversing toward, towards that and it's not taking me anywhere it's just making my mind noisy restless and i'm just running in circles right the more of these cravings and aversion i have the more tighter i am clinging to something it's going to be more tighter i am clinging to a object the harder um, my life is going to become right it's a more it's very it's going to uh, make mind very restless very noisy very unpleasant in some ways so you so we learn to keep observing the sensation and this is like a practice it's not some kind of a theory and you can understanding doesn't help it because it's a habit this clinging and craving is, is a very strong internal habit right and with the practice we slowly slowly start to break it down right now once we slowly start to break it down you will see like your mind is automatically become very calm and composed and um, you know you are more uh, in the moment uh, and you in general you are more satisfied because you are not so much you know there's not so much tension inside yourself right so whatever task you are doing before you will find you will be able to do it much better even right once you practice it and as you start to practice and you, it's is like you the way this way of living the life you know like basically craving for this sensation and clinging to that sensation is not a very nice way of living the life but that's like a default way of living a life right and once you come out of the default 
now it's up to you like how you want to you know uh, participate how you want to engage with the life or if you want to go further inside yourself and if you want to you know understand more deeply what exactly i am what is the nature of what is my nature and all these kind of stuff uh, you can actually do that right you have this space available to you after once you uh, once you start to practice this you will uh, see that you can do something other than clinging and doing other than uh, craving and clinging and aversing to these sensation basically so so that's the three uh, aspects of the practice some precepts your mind becomes quiet and, and not be so restless then we slowly start to build the concentration and then we start to cultivate our own understanding and it's more like experiential understanding it's not some kind of a theoretical uh, knowledge that we understand okay this is that this is that it is like more deeper clear direct experience kind of understanding and uh, and then it is up to you like how you want to live your life right and in that process you will see your craving and clinging start to you know um, uh, pass away and uh, even in another very imp interesting aspect of the practice is like once you start to you know observe this and you are not really reacting in the moment based on these sensations uh, whatever the store whatever the stuff we have stored in the past right whatever is unfinished uh, uh, undigested experiences from the past right many thing happen in the past uh, maybe somebody uh, you may, maybe you don't like a certain experience and you you know you really repulse to it and maybe you like some experiences you know uh, so you kind of hold on to it maybe you had a breakup maybe <laughs> so there's so many different things inside yourself that is still there and they are rotting they are still there they are you know they are um, coming because we are so busy we are we keeping ourselves so busy outside that we are not really looking at it but they keep trying to come up right so once you practice this you will also notice uh, especially in the meditation retreats you will notice uh, these things which we didn't get properly digested start to come up right and you will feel this like uh, you know uh, another opportunity to digest it and in that um, in that process you will see like more and more purification is happening on the level of your mind right and you feel more and more lighter you don't have so much baggage from the past that didn't get digested or you just cling to it or you just you know averse to it and um, you just feel more lighter and yeah that's uh, that's and that's i guess pretty much it and i will highly recommend you at least try that one 10 day retreat so you can see like whether this is something you you want to engage in or uh it's not like something that uh, clicks with you thank you